Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Tsukihime. When last we left off, we had one, my absolute favorite scene in the entire visual novel, and another scene that is probably in my top five, maybe top ten. More like top ten, probably, over top five, but it's, it's up there. I love that scene. I love both of those scenes. Uh, and if you hear any weird pausing in the background, or pausing or wind in the background rather it's extraordinarily windy outside for some reason well not for some reason i know exactly why it's windy um but if i pause it's because i went to go check because it's windy and there's a lot of trees where i live and I'm just wanting to make sure uh, <laughs> if a branch doesn't fall and hit the house or a car or something like that i would say random passerbys but there's no random passerbyers here and it's like uh, night so anyway let's get into it shall we Five, Cain one. A uh, little fun fact, if you're unaware, um, Cain from the biblical story of Cain and Abel is said to be the in a lot of biblical lore, not biblical, uh, monster mythologies. Um, Cain is the first vampire. Um, I think like Canaanites is the term that's used for. Uh, vampires or it might just be pure-blooded vampires but i think it's canaanites or vampires in vampire the masquerade the tabletop game as well as vampire the masquerade bloodlines which is the uh, the crpg um so kane won and i don't know I, I can't say for sure in this sense well i probably actually could um but uh, kane in reference to vampire is usually just meaning the original vampire, Cain. And if you don't know the story of Cain and Abel, uh, the biblical story of Cain and Abel, I'm not going to explain that to you now. That would be even longer than I want to ramble. I'm wasting a lot of time. A wrenching pain suddenly awakes me. Ah, ouch. I lift myself up from bed. I sleepily check my back. There aren't any wounds. The pain is exactly my back, but more from my spine. And not so much pain as in the feeling of something hot welling up around the back of my neck. I must have slept wrong. It's a good thing this bed is soft, but when it's too gorgeous like this. All of a sudden, I look down at my hands, and my mind halts completely. What is this? I stare at both hands. Red. From my elbows to my hands, my skin is painted red. My fists are a dark vermilion. No, red doesn't quite suit it or describe it. The dried red on my hands is closer to black. I don't understand. But last night, I spoke with Kahaku-san in the courtyard and went straight to bed. I didn't do anything to make my hands like this, and I don't remember seeing a nightmare. My head is throbbing with pain. I put aside wondering why my hands are painted red. It's almost seven o'clock. I have to go wash my hands before Hisui comes to wake me up. After washing my hands, I go to the lobby. Shikisama, Hisui calls my name. Ah, morning, Hisui. I woke up a little early, so I went to wash my face. Somehow, I managed to blurt out an excuse. Good morning. Well then, what should we do about your change of clothes? I have prepared your uniform in your room. It seems like Hisui was already in my room, and we just mitched each other by the stairs. Yeah, I'll go ahead and change after breakfast, so leave it there. Sorry for not being there when you came to wake me up. As you wish. I'll go tell Nesson, so please wait in the sitting room. Hisui walks toward the end of the mansion to call for Kohaku-san. Now then. It is still 6.30. 
I'm sure no one in the sitting room at this time, so I should go enjoy the moment. Nissan, you are up surprisingly early. And then, as soon as I open the door to the sitting room, Akia greets me while elegantly drinking some tea. Not hangover, it would seem. Now I'm the one who's surprised. Managing to respond calmly, I walk into the sitting room. Don't worry, I wasn't either. I didn't drink enough to get hungover. I, was, I did have a pretty hefty buzz going on, though. What's going on? Do you usually get up this early? Is it that early? Today I slept in an hour more than usual, so I don't think it is early at all. She seems to be in a very good mood. Usually, Nissan, it is common for students to get up this early. Do not assume I am lazy like you. Is what she would say. Akia, did something good happen? I ask, full of fear, to which she answers with a big smile and a nod. Nissan, please have a seat. Breakfast is not for a while, so please keep me company. Uh, sure. I sit on the sofa across from her. She prepares a separate teacup. Some tea is poured into the opulent teacup. Steam comes out. Even the steam looks bourgeoisie. Actually, I think that was uh, bourgeois. Now, nah, whatever. Do you want any milk? If so, I can go get some. No, this is fine. But Akia, it just strikes me as odd that you already had another teacup ready. I ask this, being a fairly natural question. Yes. I always prepare an extra set so we can have tea if you ever come. You mean you were waiting for me yesterday and the day before? I'm a little afraid of her answer. But she doesn't seem angry at all. That is true, but you do not need to worry. I do it because I want to, so you may do the same. Her words are correct. Besides, I think this is fine. It's good enough if you wake up early only once in a while. Smiling, she brings the teacup to her lips. A chill runs down my spine. Something is wrong. Akia being calm and kind is fortunate, but this might be too much. I have to find out what's wrong. Akia, you. Yes? What is it, Nissan? Uh, um... I hate to ask, but are you still drunk? Huh? Akia tilts her head to the side like a small bird. I think her eyebrow twitched, but she still holds her smile. Um, I do not necessarily want to ask either, but what exactly were you thinking? Oh, sorry, that was the wrong voice. That first line was Akia, I apologize. Well, you drank a whole lot yesterday. That amount of alcohol doesn't just go away in a day, so I thought you were still drunk. I mean, kind of. I don't know how much... Well, she drank a fifth of whiskey, then, you know. That's a different story. But still, I mean, it's not going to stay in you for, you know, eight, nine hours. Especially if you, you know, you're smart and uh, intersperse water in between your drinking sessions. There is no other explanation for Akia's good mood this morning. Which is also how you can avoid hangovers if you, uh, you basically need to drink as much water as you drink alcohol. And you will, are less likely to get hungover, um, ener uh, not energy drinks, uh, sports drinks like Gatorade or Powerade works too. Um, but yeah, it, hydration helps with hangovers. N Nissan, you... So, uh, drink your water, kids. She looks down, shoulders quivering. It looks like she's not happy, I found out. Here, you don't have to go try to act 
time, so go back to your room. You can skip school and rest today. I won't laugh. You are so wrong. She slams her hand down on the table. The teacups rattle. Yeah, I mean, I've drank a bottle of wine in a single night before. Woke up eight hours, eight-ish hours later. I was hungover as hell, but I was, you know, sober. The teacups rattle. Oh, re really? Aki, you really shouldn't force yourself like this. I am not forcing anything. You think that I would do such a thing as drink so much I would be drunk the next morning? She pounds the table again. Again, the teacups rattle. First of all, don't make any of my plans yourself. I don't need your permission to skip school. She stares at me, breathing heavily. I take in her gaze and cross my arms. You're back to normal now. Well, since you have that much energy, I guess alcohol is out of your system. Huh? Akia stares at me, aghast. Was it teasing Master Shiki-san? Nisan, did you plan this? Not really. I actually did think that, though. Your method is a bit sneaky. Why can't you just keep peaceful mornings peaceful, Nissan? Same to you. A peaceful morning isn't something you control. Well, I'm happy that you were always waiting for me, though. But I think it's better if we spend the morning more like this. So go ahead and say the things you want to say. Well, I'll probably be squashed completely if she really did say everything every time she had a complaint. So I hope she can hold back at least a little. What's that? More like it is now? Is that the kind of relationship between us? Can't we? I just wanted to be honest. Want I just wanted to be honest with each other. I don't want to lie or hide things. Uh, yeah, me too. Aki gives a subdued response. Jeez. Nissan, you seem to have been a better talker since I saw you last. Back then, you could never calm me down like that. Is that so? That was just me talking honestly. As your own Nichan, I can just give one. I just wanted to get along with my beloved. No, I can't say that. My dear little sister. Oh, Nichan. Even if you are just joking, please don't say that. It feels sick. Akia averts her eyes. She just stares at her teacup. I do not want to hide things from you either, Nissan. She manages that response. What? Are you actually hiding something from me, Akia? Well, if it's something I want to say, then I want you to get up early every day. Really, I was happy when you woke up early to this. I uh, woke up this early. So, if you had tea with me every morning, I would be able to go to school every day happily. Akia fidgets and glances around. Then. Thank you for waiting. Shiki-san, breakfast is ready. Kahaku-san arrives. Huh? Akia, you're not eating? Of course not. Oh, Akia-san, I already finished breakfast. Shiki-san, if you want to eat with Akia-sama, you have to get up before six. Ugh. There's no way that's going to happen. Oh well, I'm going to eat. Later, Akia. Getting up, I head towards the dining room. Akia wordlessly watches me leave. She wants to say something, but that look seems to be directed not at me, but at Kahaku-san. Intriguing. I return to the sitting room after breakfast and find that Akia is not there.
start drinking water. Instead, I run into Hisui, who's gathering up all the teacups. Uh-huh. Hisui, where's Akia? Akia-sama already left for school. Oh yeah, her school is far away. Well, I shouldn't be hanging around either. Yes, your uniform is prepared in your room. When you are done changing, please call for me. Hisui quietly disappears towards the lobby. After changing my clothes, I leave the mansion earlier than usual. I'll come right back today, so it'll probably be around 4 o'clock. Oh, and you don't have to wait for me here. As you wish. In that case, please be careful on your way, Shikisama. Thanks. I'm heading out. Waving to Hisui as she bows, I go out into the street. I uneventfully arrive at my classroom and start another normal day of classes. Then, I realize something. Imizuka's desk is now missing. Even though one classmate is gone, the school schedule resumes as always. Her desk is forgotten, and life goes on. Why? As soon as I realize it, I become uneasy. What happened with Yumizuka was something that I could not forget. So, why? Why is it that until now, I didn't even remember her? Shiki-kun, you and I are the same. Those words still burn in the back of my mind. But that's strange. But still, I can't think about it deeply. That night, it seems that when Aki attended my wounds that night, I lost something. About Yumizuka being a vampire, and even now, it all seems too empty. Or was that a really bad dream after all? That cannot be true. But I cannot deny it that strongly. Even though I'm in a class without her right now, I can't recall her that well. From that night until now, something about reality didn't seem quite right to me. Before I know it, the day is over. Sigh. I don't feel like seeing Arihiko or Senpai. It seems like I can calm down more when I'm at home. I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Senpai, but I'm glad we're not seeing Arihiko. Hello. I enter the lobby and see Hisui. Welcome back, Shikisama. Y yeah, thanks, Hisui. Are Kahaku-san and Akiya gone? Akiya-sama has yet to return. Nesan is in the rear courtyard cleaning up. Like always. I'll be in my room, so please continue whatever you are doing. Yes? Please excuse me? I head up the stairs. Ah, uh, Shikisama? Hmm? I will be arranging Makihisa-sama's room. If you need anything, please call me. Hisui walks towards the eastern wall or eastern end of the mansion quickly. I take off my shirt and take things out of my bag. And then... A white ribbon sticks out between the textbooks. Oh. I should probably give this back. That ribbon I've been carrying for eight years since that day. I returned here to give back that ribbon, so it's about time I give it back to whom it belongs. I grip it tightly. I imagine myself giving the ribbon to Hisui and shake my head. Eight years ago, we only spoke a few words underneath that tree, but it is a precious memory to me. So, even though it might sound selfish, I don't want to give it back to Hisui when she doesn't remember the promise. Besides, there's something. 
I can't quite place it, but there's something not right. Until this feeling goes away, I want to hold on to this ribbon. Sigh. Sitting in my chair, I look at the leaves fluttering down. I put the ribbon in my pocket. I might meet Hisui if I stay inside, so I decide to cool off outside. I think about yesterday. I spoke with Kohaku-san when I was cooling off in the courtyard. Why did you return? Her face, for an instant, was not her usual cheery expression. Just, what was that all about? Huh? Hiki-san, you've grown to like this place? Is she done cleaning? Kohaku-san walks over to me with her broom. Uh, n no, that's not it. Having her appear in front of me while I was thinking about her, I'm unable to respond quickly. Anyway, I'll just be in Kohaku-san's way, so I should go back to my room. Oh, are you leaving already, Shiki-san? It is still pretty early, so you can't, can't you stay here a bit longer? Kohaku-san places the broom on the ground. I didn't want to get in your way. I am already done sweeping. I've already checked on the flowers, so I'm finished. I have a little spare time before I have to prepare dinner, so I thought I would come here and relax. She takes off her apron, as if emphasizing the fact that she isn't working right now. So, Shiki-san, would you mind talking with me? Uh, n no, if you're fine with it, then sure. Then it's decided. Gohaku-san says with a smile, and sits down in a chair a little distance away. Actually, let me make a correction. Trying to sit down, she stares at me. Shiki-san, you look like you aren't very happy. Eh? Do I look that way? Yes. If you keep that face up, your glasses will cloud over, you know. Gohaku warns me, half-jokingly. Anyway, Shiki-san, we had our conversation last night. Yesterday's conversation, which one? About you borrowing something a long time ago. Did you already give that back? Her eyes shine brightly as she asks. Just like the time I received the knife, she seems incredibly curious. No, the person doesn't seem to remember it. It's not the whole reason, but I've decided to hold on to it for now. Oh, so you'll just steal it like that? It's not like it's a useful thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not anything useful. It was nice to get it, but I haven't even used it once. Well, a guy using a ribbon is just weird, and thankfully, I'm not into that sort of thing. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever. I see. Hey, Shiki-san. Can I guess who you got it from? Sure, you seem like that sort of thing, or you seem to like that sort of thing. Yes, that person definitely has to be Hisui-chan, right? Bingo. Well done, Kohaku-san. It was eight years ago, right? Hisui-chan was the one really close to you back then. Kohaku-san sounds very happy. Really close to me? that so? Putting that aside, the promise was really important thing for me. That day, eight years ago, that girl who watched, who only watched, came to tell me to give it back. That really saved me. Huh? With a pause, Kahaku looks directly at me. I don't know how it was for her, but Without that promise, I think I would have become a miserable person. Those days where I was treated like an unwanted child, I was given her most prized possession and was told to come to return it. Thinking that the girl was waiting for me, Tonoshiki, at the place I was supposed to return to, that was enough for me and I didn't want anything else. Yeah, that's right. That's why I can't simply give it back. If I give it back to Hisui, she'd just take it away like an empty plate after dinner. 
It's just my selfish notion, but I can't give it back to Hisui yet. I want her to remember it. Since it made me so happy, I, I want to thank her and fulfill the promise. If I don't do that, I don't think I'll be able to face myself or Hisui. Still sitting in the chair, I completely bare my heart. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kohaku-san. Maybe there's something about this garden that helps me talk about the past. Kohaku-san, is there something the matter? You look troubled. Eh? I feel like I always do. With her troubled face, she smiles like normal. Well, she tries to. Hiki-san? Am I really making that strange of a face? She looks at the window glass, and the window is the troubled looking face, and Gahaku-san just looks at herself in surprise. Gahaku-san, if you aren't feeling well, you can go back to your room and rest. Don't mind me. Maybe you're right. I'll rest and then get dinner ready. Gahaku-san slowly walks away. And Shiki-san? Hisui Chan is forgetful, so please be patient with her. Oh, maybe if you talk, if you take her to that same tree in the garden as eight years ago, she might somehow remember. Kahaku-san picks up the broom and heads towards the rear entrance to the mansion. I see. If I take her to that tree, she just might remember. But that seems wrong. If I force her to remember, that won't make me happy either. Maybe it is a good idea to go see that tree. I haven't been there since I got back, so maybe I'll swing by there when I have another chance. Huh? Come to think of it, I wonder why Kohaku-san knows about where I met Hisui. Even though they're sisters, I can't imagine that Hisui would just tell her. That promise seemed secret, somehow. I just can't imagine Hisui, with her personality, like a haku song like that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where I'm going to end off this episode. And, well, uh, I'm going to be saying this a lot, I'm sure. Although, probably not uh, as much as the past couple. That last scene is probably my second or third favorite scene in the visual novel. It Genuinely, it is. I love that scene a lot. It's an absolute gut punch. Especially if you know what's going on. Like, if you've read the past route, you know exactly what's going on. It's a real, real gut punch, and I absolutely love it. But next time, well, things happen. <laughs> and I, I can't say any more than that without giving away spoilers, sadly. So I apologize for my even worse than usual cliffhanger. But I do hope to see you all next time.